Let us sing to the Lord, for he has gloriously triumphed. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you intercede for us with your Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, by whose grace, though sinners, we are made just, and though pitiable are made blessed, stand, we pray, by your works, stand by your gifts, that those justified by faith may not lack the courage of perseverance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. After much debate had taken place, Peter got up and said to the apostles and the presbyters, My brothers, you are well aware that from early days God made his choice among you that through my mouth the Gentiles would hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, who knows the heart, bore witness by granting them the Holy Spirit just as he did us. He made no distinction between us and them, for by faith he purified their hearts. Why then are you now putting God to the test by placing on the shoulders of the disciples a yoke that neither our ancestors nor we have been able to bear? On the contrary, we believe that we are saved through the grace of the Lord Jesus in the same way as they. The whole assembly fell silent, and they listened while Paul and Barnabas described the signs and wonders God had worked among the Gentiles through them. After they had fallen silent, James responded, My brothers, listen to me. Simeon has described how God first concerned himself with acquiring from among the Gentiles a people for his name. The words of the prophets agree with this, as is written, After this I shall return and rebuild the fallen hut of David. From its ruins I shall rebuild it and raise it up again, so that the rest of humanity may seek out the Lord, even all the Gentiles on whom my name is invoked. Thus says the Lord, who accomplishes these things known from of old. It is my judgment, therefore, that we ought to stop troubling the Gentiles who turn to God, but tell them by letter to avoid pollution from idols, unlawful marriage, the meat of strangled animals, and blood. For Moses, for generations now, has had those who proclaim him in every nation, and he has been read in the synagogues every Sabbath. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce his salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we have here the first of our ecumenical councils, the first council to debate a topic. First one we call the Council of Jerusalem, the most recent one we call Vatican II in the 1960s. Remember that there was a question brought up of whether Gentiles had to first become Jewish before becoming Christians. 
and some that were Pharisees said, yes, it must be, and others like Peter and now Paul and Barnabas are saying, no, we've seen it. Peter saw it in the call to the house of Cornelius in the vision of the clean and unclean animals together descending from heaven, and Paul and Barnabas by a lived faith in their first apostolic voyage of seeing those who were non-Jews who were claiming and, and embracing Christ. And so we see the, the layout of it here. We hear of Peter, we hear of Paul and Barnabas, and we hear of St. James, the first bishop of Jerusalem. We see the hierarchy lived out. Both speak. Uh, we, hear the, we hear Peter, we hear Paul and Barnabas, and then ultimately they defer to the bishop of the local place, St. James. And so Peter, you know, shows that it's not, in his experience, it's, it's brought about by faith. It's not brought about by the physical act of circumcision or the physical act of, of, of following the kosher dietary laws. Um, and then Paul and Barnabas, of course, are able to tell theirs. We don't get the whole story, but we can imagine they talk of all the adventures they had in places like Antioch and Pisidia and Lystra and Derby and uh, all the, all the stops on their journey and all, all the effects. Well, after listening to it, we hear the debate uh, resolved in that St. James, the bishop resolves the situation using scripture as a basis. He quotes, I think, the prophet Hosea. And then he gives his judgment. This is what we should do. So there is a bit of a compromise that we don't have to burden them with the physical act of circumcision. Or, but we do ask them to do a few things which will help them to be accepted by the community. And so this is the compromise. First thing is not to take polluted flesh. Now, it's not, it's not you know, uh, rotted meat or, you know, something like that. It's essentially um, what, what they did was, uh, you know, meat was sacrificed to... Uh, in temples, in these pagan temples, but in reality, uh, just a small piece of it was burned. The rest was put on the market, and so this was a way for these pagan temples to make some money. And so, um, but for the Jews, this was already sacrificed to a pagan god, so Jews would stay away from this meat. It was considered spiritually unclean. So it was told, all right, don't buy any of that meat anymore. Uh, the unlawful marriage, other than the Jews, Jews had the, the unique sort of uh, monogamous marriage and other pagan religions uh, there was promiscuity it was accepted it was just part of life and there was also polygamy you know you could have many wives um, and so they said you know stay away from those things even though uh, you know they are accepted by other peoples and then finally they do ask them to be to follow the a bit of the kosher dietary law that idea of the way that the meat is prepared in the end, it's not that they're saying stay away from meat, it's just how it's done. The idea when they slaughtered meat in the kosher way, the blood which symbolizes life, it, it's on a platter that the, the blood goes away from the body. Um, it sounds a bit strange now, but this was uh, the, the kosher law, and they asked them to do this. And these were the three conditions lived out. Um, and, and so the, the response comes. They have a question, a debate, the, debate, the, the topic... Uh, is, is debated, is discussed, and eventually here we see a, a ruling, a definitive ruling. So very early on, as we said, in Acts of the Apostles, from just a few years after the death and a resurrection, ascension of Jesus, that the church had this established hierarchy of, of authority that, that some say, well, you know, where, where is this in the Bible? Well, here it is, Acts of the Apostles. And the Lord in the Gospel, he's, we're back at the Last Supper, talking about remaining in his love, as the Father loves me, I love you. And we know that, you know, it's a sacrificial love. Love doesn't always mean that everything is going to be perfect. It doesn't mean everything's always going to be wonderful. Sometimes love hurts. Sometimes love is saying goodbye to, you know, is, is losing a friendship because someone is choosing something bad. And we love them enough to say, I can't, I can't stay and watch you do this to yourself. Sometimes, you know, love is... is uh, dealing with a suffering person, a sick person, a dying person. And of course, our Lord himself, who is love, uh, you know, suffered and died for us. And if he did it for us, he asked us at some extent to embrace our cross and there will be some suffering. And what's strange is all of that can lead, still lead to joy. Every day now at Mass, in the preface of the, of the Eucharistic prayer, we say, therefore, overcome with paschal joy, you know, I don't feel joy, and I certainly don't necessarily feel overcome with it. But why do we say it only in the Easter season? Because we point each day to when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. 
that that moment of his death, which reignited our relationship with God, reestablished the covenant. And then, if that wasn't enough, which would have been, right, that the world lives because that person died, that very person who died resurrects, is back alive, is still our, our, our intercessor, our, our lover, our, the one who cares the most about us, or the one who, through whom we were created. So that's the task, and that's what makes us uniquely Christian, you know, that, that we can find joy even in the difficulty, even when we have to do the difficult thing. In a hedonistic world that says it's only worth doing if it's pleasurable, in a world that over-medicates on pain management, that only if, you know, uh, I want to make sure that I'm numb for everything, for every feeling, not just for physical pain, but even mental pain, uh, it's, it's that idea of, it seems almost foreign to people now of embracing the cross, of embracing sometimes the pain as it draws us closer to God and ultimately to the truth of life that this world, the pain in this world, is only transitory, that after this we step into eternity where there is no more suffering and no more pain. Please stand. With humility and confidence, let us bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions for ourselves and the world. For bishops around the world, may the Holy Spirit continue to animate them in their proclamation of the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may the Lord light a pathway to their prudent and just decision-making. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who struggle with mental illness, may the Lord surround them with a community of loving care. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of this community, may the Spirit rejuvenate our faith and strengthen our commitment to the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for all who have died. May the Lord welcome them with joy into his eternal presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Joan V. Wade and for Margaret Cochan, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Good and gracious God, we trust that you always hear us, and we ask that you answer these petitions in accordance with your will, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hold his holy church. Amen. O God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant, we pray, that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a worthy way of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Christ died for all, that those who live may live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and is risen. Alleluia.
For those watching our Mass online, we offer our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. As a reminder that tomorrow is Friday, our Adoration Day. Uh, take a look at the back at the sign-up sheet if there's any empty spots and you're able to commit yourself, please do so. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the Gospel of the Lord.